Rub up your engines! Here's a 2010 Scion XD. They don't make them anymore, you know? What's up with that? Why did Toyota stop making them? He said in three years, all he's done is change the oil. He had to change the valve cover gasket once, a minor deal, right? Runs fine, gets phenomenal gas mods. It starts fine hot, but if you say get on the highway, go eat lunch for an hour, then it's got to crank a few times before it starts, but then it starts up and runs normal. Since we got to wait an hour for it to sit here, because he drove 70 miles to get here, we're going to show you everything about the car, analyze it, and then we'll try to figure out why it's starting weird only when it's hot and it's set for an hour or so. The whole brand Scion, as far as I'm concerned, was just a stupid idea of Toyota. This one was made in 08, made in Japan. The paint's still good. The interior still in decent shape. Even the plastic on the bumper still shiny. And yeah, it's an economy box car. So it has hubcaps, who cares, they look okay. Now, Toyota made Scions because they thought, let's sell cars to young people. I remember when it started, when I was in Houston, and they do things like, they went to music stores. Yeah, you probably don't even know what a music store is anymore because everybody does everything online. They sold CDs and stuff in those days, right? And they'd have bands playing and they'd have Scions there and the Toyota employees would drive the young people around, try to get them by them. So they came up, oh, Scion, a new brand. Well, one, what a stupid idea. Toyota makes good cars. They had a good name. I understand why a Jeep Renegade is called a Jeep Renegade. It's really a rebadged four-wheel drive Fiat, but calling it Jeep Renegade, it's got that Jeep mystique and fools buy it, thinking they're getting a Jeep, and then they find out later, they actually bought themselves a Fiat, which is a pile of junk. Toyotas were good, why oh why they decided to come up with a different name is beyond me. Then they gave up and went back to just calling them Toyotas again. So don't worry if you buy a used one. Well, they don't make them, I can't get parts. They're Toyotas, you can get parts of the stupid things. Now, there's one problem that a lot of science had, and that was some of them were oil burners. Now, this one doesn't burn any oil. As we look under the hood, I'll show you why. It's got a four-cylinder engine, and we'll take the stupid beauty cover off. Who cares about that? And it is, as we can see right here, 1.8. It's a 1.8 liter four-cylinder engine. Toyota makes phenomenal 1.8 liter engines. My Matrix has a 1.8. My Celica has a 1.8. And my original Toyota was a 1981 Toyota Corolla SR5. It had a 1.8 liter engine and they all ran forever and didn't burn any oil. This Scion behind me, it's got a 2.4 liter four cylinder engine. It burns oil like mad. Smoke just comes flying out of it. Your finger in the tailpipe. Slimy black burnt oil. Stick your hand in this tailpipe. Just a tiny bit of dirt. I mean, it's not black. You always get a little bit of soot, but there's no slimy oil in there. Now, that was a mistake Toyota made. They didn't make the piston rings and the engines right, and they burn oil. The problem was, Americans whine. 1.8 liters isn't big enough for us. I know, it's big enough for me. They all lasted forever. What do I care? Realize that 95% or so of Americans only drive automatic transmissions. On XD. As you can see, it's a standard transmission, a manual transmission. You shift it yourself at five speeds. It gets up, it goes. It doesn't burn oil. It runs fine. If you do pair this with an automatic transmission, yes, it's relatively slow, even though it's a smaller car. And so right off the bat, you'd understand, well, if 95% of Americans drive automatics, there goes their market down the toilet for this car, because hardly any Americans drive standards anymore. But they can run perfectly fine. And the ones with automatics, they run perfectly fine too. They're not race cars. They went to a bigger engine and they made a mistake. It's a smaller engine, it can run forever. You really don't have to worry as long as you change your oil. He bought it used. He's put on 30,000 miles. It still doesn't burn oil. They're generally pretty bulletproof engines, but buying a used Scion, instead of 1.8, if it says 2.5, my advice is don't buy it unless, now Toyota did replace a lot of the engines. If they have a certificate from Toyota that said they did the engine over, it could still be a decent vehicle. When they put the right pistons and piston rings in, they didn't burn oil and they ran perfectly fine. That's one thing that you want to watch out for these. Now smaller engines, Get better gas mods. He gets 37 in this. And for some oddball reason, I got about 37 coming back to Tennessee from Rhode Island last time. Even though the thing's only rated at like 32. Who knows? The world's insane. But <laughs> they get good gas mods. They don't burn oil. And they can last a long time. And even though it's a somewhat older car. Talking about 13, 14 years old. Almost everything on its original. It's got the original alternator, air conditioning compressor, motor mounts. 
almost everything on this thing is pretty much original. I mean, that's how well made these things are. Now we'll go inside. And these were basically Econobox cars. There's no argument here. There's no gigantic frills in these things. Everything works. Everything's easy to get to. AC. And it does have, you can change the music on the steering wheel. That's it. But, hey, I mean, you start it up. They start up. We're not going to start it yet because we don't want to start it. We want to see why it doesn't start when it sits for an hour. And it's got faux carbon fiber. You know, that's plastic, right? <laughs> but all in all, with the seats back, you got all kinds of carrying room. These are very handy little cars. Hey, it's not as basic as you might think. Although, it is pretty basic here. There's no armrest unless you have the longest arms in the history of mankind. Now, we're going to road test it later, but now I'm going to look at data. Starts fine cold. Starts fine hot. But the stupid thing is hard to start when it sits for about an hour after driving it a while. If it sits for a few hours, it starts right up. So we got a very limited range of when it doesn't start. Check this out. I really like the speedometer. It's got the speedometer and then the tachometer's on the side. It's all one place, right in front of where you're looking. Pretty good design. Granted, a tachometer on a modern car, most are automatics, is a joke. What do you really need it for? But this is the standard. Now, here we go. It's figured out that it's a Scion XD. Engine's normal, ABS is normal. There's nothing oddball with it, which is no surprise. Now, it's any bad data as it stands now, but you can really only check it when it's running. We don't want to start it yet, so let's check a few other things. We know he hasn't done anything for three years. Just look at the spark plugs for kicks. Oh, uh, we'll pull it out. Uh, see what it looks like. Who knows? Might even be the original ones. We don't know. And yes, indeed, what do we have? The original spark plugs. <laughs> So we're going to change them. Now it came with Iridium plugs, so we're putting Iridium plugs back in. And here's a debate that you need to understand. A lot of people say, oh, you can put NICs. You don't put NICs on any of these modern ones because you can see they are already plated. And if you put lubricant on this, they can get loose. So you just want to put them in the way they are, these Iridium runs. They're already plated. You don't do anything but put them in dry. Tighten them up by hand. Then put a ratchet on. Then you get them the rest of the way. Now it's tight, so what you do is go about another 20, 30 degrees, and that's good. Then it's nice and tight. You can use a torque wrench if you want, but you really don't need to. Remember to do all four. We're going to analyze them too, see if any cylinders are more worn than others by the color of the plug. Look at this one, it's the same as the other one. Got a little discoloration, that's normal. You can see it's just kind of like pinky little dots on it. That's from fuel additives. At some point in time, somebody had some kind of additive in a gasoline box, and they'll get little dotty stuff like that. Just it's nothing outrageous. I mean, if you put new plugs in there immediately like that, yeah, I'd buy my gas somewhere else. But these are the original plugs, and they've been in there for 14 years, so you're going to get oddball things that have burnt over time. So far, they both look the same. We'll do the other two. So let's see if we kill two birds with one stone let's see if it starts up now after an hour or so we'll see what happens there push on the clutch because it's a standard and starts right up <laughs> realize even toyotas need spark plugs every once in a while these were like 15 year old spark plugs so yeah not that big of a deal change every once in a while now we can look at the data Let's see what's happening. Battery vultures, 13.69, that's fine. No misfires, they're all off. Go through everything, everything's blue and normal. 10 degrees timing, that's stable. Map sensor, stable. Current fuel trim, it's running a little lean, but not that much. 0 0.7, 0 0.78, that's almost perfect. That's perfect as zero, so it's pretty good. And everything else is blue and is within specs for sure. Well, now maybe a little car, but it's relatively high up. You don't feel like you're dragging in the ground in this thing. It is an XB after all. It's a relatively boxy, somewhat high vehicle. And if you keep it in gear lower, it's a zippy thing to drive around in. Just see here, I'm not really slowing down that much to take these corners. You don't hear the tires squealing, they're not squealing. It's just a pretty well designed little zippy box. And of course, it's a light car, the brakes work perfectly fine, no sound coming out of them. You can drive it as fast or slow as you want. And really, it handles the twisties quite well. It doesn't have any problem cornering. You're not squealing tires. Now of course, it's not a race car, you know. It's a Scion XD with a 1.8 liter engine. But here, we'll see what it can do. It can burn rubber because it doesn't have traction control. 
<laughs> yeah, it's not as slow as you might think. It gets going. Like I said, I love having the tack and a speedometer together like that. It makes them so easy to read. But really, I didn't expect it to burn rubber like that. That's a 1.8, but Toyota knows how to make 1.8s so with a standard transmission. Hey, it's got a little zip to it. Of course, the track's perfectly fine. You know, hands, no hands driving here. Sure, it doesn't ride like my wife's Lexus, but it's a Scion. It's an Econo box car. It handles fine. You get somewhat of a bumpy ride. That's how they are. It's a small wheelbase vehicle. An Econo box thing. It doesn't have really smooth absorbing systems, but it holds the road and it's fun to drive. Truthfully, the shape that's in it, knowing that it's a Toyota made in Japan, I wouldn't think anything about driving around the world in this thing if there was enough road to get there. <laughs> Geared correctly, cause look, we're going 60 miles an hour and it's only going about 25, 2600 RPMs. That's how it gets phenomenal gas mileage. So there we have it, a fun little car. It gets phenomenal gas mileage. Yeah, it's got a rough ride. So does my wife's Matrix. Hey, they're small cars, but they get phenomenal gas mileage. And in this case, it started weird when it was hot, soaked for an hour. Now it doesn't, just cause it had the original spark plugs. They wore out. You can find one of these. My advice, snap it up. Just be leery of the ones. They got that 2.5 liter four cylinder engine. They're off in oil burners. I wouldn't buy one of those, but these 1.8s, they can run forever. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.